Assalamualaikum. Good morning, everyone. So I hope you are having a good day ahead. Um, I'm pretty nervous for this. This is my first time being a moderator, but I hope you can um, accept me being a amateur moderator. Oh my god. So it's 9.31 right now. Um, I think we can start. Can we start now? Is there anyone here? Have you take your breakfast, dear viewers? How are you? Hi, brought your friend. Good. It's important to take breakfast on your um, day because um, you, you need energy to start your day, right? So it's very important to take your breakfast. Okay, so um, without further ado, um, before we start our majlis, um, let's start our majlis with Umul um, Kitab Al-Fatiha to ensure the smoothness of our, of our program for today. I hope today's event will uh, go smoothly as we expect it to be. Um, so, wait a minute. I wish um, a warm welcome to audience here. Um, thank you so much for being here in this morning. I know it's kind of early for to be at, at event this morning. So, Thank you so much for being here. Um, I'm not going to stall any time anymore. I'm going to introduce the speaker of today's event. Um, as you can, as you guys can see from the the poster itself, uh, the the speakers for today will be the fourth year of Encom student, um, and he was the he was an ex uh, KLMSS member in academic affairs. So, without further ado, let's welcome our speaker for today, uh, Brother, Has Brother Nur Hasbullah Arif, to, to this event. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm doing good. I just had my breakfast. It was lovely. Oh, that's good. So, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> I kind of nervous. That's okay. Okay. Um, I would like to ask you to reintroduce yourself because um, yeah, I'm sure that this audience here wants to know about you more. All right. <clears throat> All right. So, what should I introduce in this? Okay, I'll just gonna tell you my full name. Uh, what I'm usually called as um and some of the obvious things all right so assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh my name is nur hasbullah ali bin amin pandi 
you can just call me Has. You do not have to go very formal with bro Has or something. Just, just Has is fine. Um, I'm from Bintulu, Sarawak. And I am, but I'm currently living in Negeri Sembilan, in Mantin Negeri Sembilan. And I am in my fourth year, final semester, and I'm comp student. However, now I'm currently doing my Japanese minor, but we are not here to talk about Japanese. We are here to talk about Ancom. So, what else do you want to know? <coughs> um, are you currently in Mahala right now? Oh yes, I am currently in my Mahala. Um, if you hear noises in the background, please forgive me. There are people. I mean, there are workers right now. Um, tengah potong rumput, you know. Okay, we can hear your voice clearly. Um, so yeah, uh, actually, um, after hearing about your introduction to yourself, I feel like, oh, um, I feel excited to know more about this NCOM program because um, I'm as my uh, NCOM student myself, as the first year, second semester uh, student, I don't know much about NCOM. So can you please explain more about NCOM uh, and what is actually NCOM? All right, so I'm just going to go very brief on what NCOM is. As you can, as a lot of us here might have known, NCOM is a short form when it comes to English for International Communication, which is the name of our course, name of our major. We are in the Kulia of Languages and Management alongside with another four courses, which is our COM, Arabic for International Communication. We have Malcom, Malay for International Communication, and we have, uh, before it was called STPHM, uh, I've heard recently it has been changed into TPLM. If I'm not mistaken, it's Tourism Planning Management. Back then it was TPHM, Tourism Planning Hospitality Management. And now they dropped out the hash, they had dropped out the hospitality and they focused more on the tourism planning only. But then again, we are here to talk about NCOM. So what NCOM actually is, we're using English as the medium of communication. Meaning to say our assessments, our writing skills, <clears throat> a lot of the things that we do are English related works. Yeah, I think that's very interesting to know um, about NCOM as a brief. Uh, so uh, I heard that you were an engineering student before this. So what made you apply for change of program to NCOM? The news spread very fast. Yes, I was from engineering. Uh, I actually majored in biotechnology in IM Gomba. Uh, I went there for a year. And I was in my foundation, I was doing engineering as well. Uh, but uh, just a short introduction, when it comes to in your, in your major in IIUM, your first year is basically the general engineering and you will always go for your major on your second year. However, in my first year, I felt like engineering is not in me, you know. I can do it <coughs> and my point is great anyway. I can do it, I understand it. But as time goes by, I just felt like, am I really going to waste, not a waste, am I really going to spend some time in engineering for something I don't like and miss an opportunity that I like? Get it? So, when I got into NCOM, I felt like, oh, this is a place. This is, because I really like using English as my medium, and I really find it fascinating to be able to use English most of the time. That's very interesting because um, I think, I don't think like people are going, I never thought, I have never had it in mind that people will go from engineering to NCOM, like change the course completely. But here I have the example uh, from my senior that wants to do so. Um, so yeah, that's very interesting. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm a new student, right? So I don't know much about the lecturers and the study plans and all. So without, uh, without going anywhere, um, further anywhere, 
Um, I want to know about, more about the lecturer. So can you introduce our lecturer to the audience here and to me? All right, but before I introduce a lot more about our lecturers, uh, all right, so the faculty members, yes, all right, thank you very much. So we have a lot of lecturers here in our screen. But before we go any further, introducing each and everyone, so I would like just I would just like to ask Almi, how many of these lecturers have you seen? Um, in my first semester, I have learned with uh, Dr. Charol and Dr. K, and I am currently in my second semester, which uh right now I'm learning with uh, Madam C, uh, Dr. Lily, Dr. Noor. Um, so Sharon, yeah, that's all. So about five out of the ten figures that you can see here, right? <coughs> yeah. All right. So, what are you studying in their subjects? Um, as for the first uh, semester, um, Dr. Sharon taught me introduction to linguistic and Dr. K taught me introduction to world literature and right now I'm taking English academic writing with Sir, uh, Dr. Sharul, English at workplace with Dr. Noor, um, persuasive speech with uh, Dr. Lily and language for international communication with Madam Z. All right, lovely and interesting. Language for international communication, uh, intercultural communication, is it? All right. Uh, let me just go a bit brief because uh, back in our time, the subject called as language for intercultural communication is actually just called as intercultural communication. We call this ICC. All right, so I think some of the viewers are also anxious or some of you are excited to know about the lectures. So let's move to our first lecture. <clears throat> All right. So the first one we have here is Dr. Noor Nabilah binti Abdullah, or a lot of us has been calling her as Dr. Noor. There's also those who, are, who call her as Dr. Nabilah. Both are fine. Both are fine because uh, I have called her both. When I'm in class, I call her Dr. Noor. But when I'm outside of class, outside of class, apparently I have this urge and I have this feeling that I would like to call her Madam Nabila. All right. So why do you think Doctor Noor is the first lecture that we introduce this morning? Mm, I'm not sure. <laughs> All right. That's okay. Dr. Noor has, is the first lecturer to be introduced because she is the head of department, HOD, for the English department. So, uh, that's why she is the first one to be introduced. So, she is the one that is in charge of all of the NCOM lectures. She's the one in charge of assigning who's going to be teaching what, teaching this, teaching that and this. She is the one that helps a lot of other lecturers out there to design to make sure that our course outline for each and every subject is actually holistic for each and every student in the class. All right, so let's see what she's teaching in NCOM IUM. All right, so there are a few subjects that she's teaching. The first one is NCO 1106 that is called as English at Workplace. This is a subject that I will explain again later. However, uh, this is the first subject that you would see Dr. Noor Nabila. The second one would be ENCO 2103. It's called as Interpersonal Communication. Again, I will explain a bit more later because we just want to know our lectures first, right? So the last one is ENCO 2312, Language and Society. Or in our time, it is called as Social Linguistics. All right, so the next lecture that I am going to talk about would be Dr. Fida, or her full name is Dr. Rafida Fifi Saha. All right, let's see what she's teaching. So the first one, she's going to be teaching as the first year, first semester, the first level 
the first subject that you are going to meet when you got into Enco My UM, and I'm sure Almi has experienced this, she is teaching Enco 1101, International Communication, or yes. let's call it as I, Intercom. So the second one is Enco 2103, Interpersonal Communication. Now, as you can see before, there are also some of the lectures that also teach interpersonal communication. And as time goes by, you will see some lectures. Why is she teaching this and why is he teaching this? The same thing. Because they are both qualified for the, to teach that kind of subject. However, it may be this semester, Dr. Sweet, Dr. Fidastan. Next semester, it might be Dr. Norston. Next other semester, we don't know. But that is... The thing in Enco My UM, all of our lectures are very qualified to teach every single, not every single subject because they have their own expertise, but they are eligible to teach a lot of subjects here in Enco My UM. How great is our lectures, right? So the next one, we have Enco 2312, Language Society, and again, this is called in, during our time as Social Linguistics. And the last one, <coughs> which is one of the hard subjects when it comes to an ENCOM IOUM is ENCO 2999 Research Methodology. Research Methodology is something that Dr. Fida is really great at. So be, be attentive in the class. You'll be learning that next semester, if I'm not mistaken, or the next two semesters. So be prepared. All right. The next one, we shall learn about Dr. Lily Suryani or we call her as Dr. Lily and some of our batch also call her as Madam Lily and it all depends on her consent which one does she wants you to call her so if she introduces herself as Dr. Lily just call her Dr. Lily if she introduces herself as Madam Lily go for Madam Lily fun fact I had done my final year project which I uh, will also talk about later uh, Dr. Lily is my supervisor, or was my supervisor. I still consider her, her as still my supervisor, you know, for my final year project. So Dr. Lily Suryani with the Abdulatif is also the Deputy Dean of Academic Affairs and Industrial Linkage. So get to know her a lot more and the subject that she's going to be teaching is ENCO 1103 Introduction to Linguistics and ENCO 1325 Persuasive Speech. And back in our time, it is called as ENCO 1105 as uh, Persuasion and Speech Communication. Or was it Speech and Persuasion Communication? Oh my god, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but yeah, she's really great at teaching those two subjects because uh, when I was doing my FYP with her, even. She is also reading some persuasion books, persuasive books, and also some linguistic books. That is where she majors in. And uh, back in our time even, she's teaching more than just two subjects. She's also teaching interpersonal communication. She thought, she thought as, there was one more subject that she taught as, but I couldn't really remember much. But I remember it being, oh, ENCO 1104, that you will soon get to know who's going to be teaching now. But she used to teach English for academic writing. Alright, the next lecture that we are going to get to know is Dr. Cheryl. I believe Almi has mentioned the name of Dr. Cheryl for a few times just now, right? Yes, I uh, I took class in with him in Sam 1 and now semester 2. Alright, that's great. And uh, he's one of the few male lecturers, to be honest, because we don't really have much of male lecturers. But... He's really good at it. All right. So the subject that he's going uh, that he thought or he's going to be teaching, two of them you already took, at uh, one of them you already took, one you're taking, and one later on. And Core One Zero Three Introduction to Linguistics, as you can see, is the same with Madam Doctor Lily Suryani just now, because again, sometimes they change lecture because our lectures are just so great and they are so powerful that I can teach a lot of subjects, you know. And then we have ENCO 1104, as I said, man, as I mentioned before. It used to be taught by Dr. Lily Suryani, and now it's being taught by Dr. Sharo. English for Academic Writing. Now, English for Academic Writing 1104 
research methodology 2999 pay attention to these two subjects as i will explain later on as well and the last subject in ncom before you took before you take your final year project is nco 4106 translation studies and as you can see here two of the subjects that dr Sharul is teaching is teaching are linguistic subjects linguistics and translation studies this means that his expertise is around those areas yeah, i can see some of the comments saying translation studies best yes that's right it's very fun to learn translation but it is a bit challenging i have to tell you that all right next lecture please all right so we have dr nor zainia norita binti mokhtar uh, some of us can call her as Dr. Noor, but a lot of times we'll be calling her as Madam Z. So let's see what Madam Z is teaching when it comes to in NCOM IAUM. So the first one that she's going to be teaching is Language for Intercultural Communication, or again, back in my time, we call it as ICC, Intercultural Communication as NCO 2101. And she's also going to be teaching NCO 3101, Semantics. Now. Madam Z is someone who loves conferences. She loves attending conferences. She loves to make conferences. Last semester, during COVID times, I have heard that her students organized an international conference, if I'm not mistaken, uh, to present about semantics, to present their research when it comes to semantics. And during my time even, we actually went to IIM Gomba, it was pre-COVID times, to also present our research paper. And to us, it was like, an experience that we couldn't forget because we actually presented in front of native speakers about what is our research all about that is related to semantics. I remember we did, we did our paper on the uses of emoji in text. What does it mean? Something, to, something fun to ponder upon. All right, that's about Madam Z. Let's introduce the next lecture. All right, Dr. Diba or Dr. Farah Diba binti Rashid Ali. Some of them, some of the students would call her Madam Farah. Some of us would call her Dr. Farah. I personally would call her Madam Diba because during my time, she introduced herself as Madam Diba. But please, whenever you need to text a lecture, you see the title as being a doctor, call them Dr. Diba unless they insist on changing. Or just call them doctor is until they insist on changing. Please don't call me doctor, just call me madam or sir. All right. So, Almi, have you heard of this name before? Uh, I'm sorry, no. But I have um, go through the Cal, um, NCOM, Cal, uh, NCOM lecturers in KLM website. So, I have seen um, these lecturers, but I have not personally take uh, her class before. All right. Don't worry, you're about to see her in your class very soon. She's about to see you in her class very soon. Let's see the subject that she's teaching, all right? So the first one she's going to be teaching is morphology, ENCO 2105 and ENCO 2106 next to each other is syntax. Both are core linguistic studies when it comes to the structure of language and ENCO 4103 discourse analysis, which that is something that is known as her major and it is Ah, tiring. All right, next lecture, please. All right, so the next one that we're going to get to know is Dr. K or Dr. Karel Azwa bin Razali. So let's see the subject is his teaching. Right, so you're also going to be going to be meeting him for those in your first years or coming to IAM soon. You're also going to be meeting him on your first year, first semester. Almi has experienced this. Introduction to World Literature, and he's also going to be teaching Phonetics and Phonology, and Code 2106. The two core linguistic when it comes to sounds, and Code 2107 as well, syntax, and as well as and Code 4102, Muslims and the New Media. Now, I do not have the experience of learning in his class personally, but I've heard that he's a very excellent lecturer. All right, next lecture, please. I think we're on our eighth lecture now. Oh, hello, Dr. Amirul. Dr. Al Amirul Aimee bin Ramzan Ali. Both Dr. K and Dr. Amirul uh, came into IIM about the same time and same area. So I've been in Dr. Amirul's class a few times. Right, let's see the lecture that he's teaching. Let's see the subject that he's teaching. 
our eighth lecture. Encode 3102 Public Relations, Encode 3326 Professional Communication, and Encode 4101 Data Analysis and Interpretation. These are the subjects that he really excels on. And some of the subjects that he he said to me that he is very interested to get to know more. So as you can see, lectures are also learning a lot while teaching. All right, our ninth lecturer would be Dr. Fiza. Associate Professor Dr. Fiza Bipi Mama'ad. All right, let's get to know her subjects. So, the, so she's going to be teaching only one subject when it comes to degree, but do not worry, she's also teaching some of the master's subjects as well, but we're not getting into that. We're just getting into the degree and uh, degree subjects only. Enco 3103 Applied Linguistics. She really excelled in that subject. I mean, she really excelled in teaching that subject. I was in her class before. I learned every single thing. I understand every single thing. She's really great. All right. Our last lecture, please. Dr. Asma. Dr. Asma Binti Mat Ali. Fun fact. She was originally from Kulia of ICT. And then she got transferred here to teach us ICT-related subjects. And those subjects are ENCO 3105. Digital Media and Communication, or as we call it, Digimat, and ENCO 4105, Computer Mediated Communication, CMC. So I took CMC with her before, uh, and it was an experience that we couldn't forget. Right, so we have learned about all 10 full-timer lectures here for ENCOM IUM. We have more lectures than just those. We have Dr. We have Raja Mari, Ms. Raja Mariha, we have Madam Nora Azlin, we have so Mohamad Ton, who is actually from KPHM, but he's teaching for NTRAP for NCOM students. And we have a lot more. We have Dr. Shamsul before, and we have... Who else do we have? We have a lot here, actually, but those are part-timers. The full-timers that you're going to be introduced to are these 10. Why? Because they are going to be the ones chosen for your supervisors when it comes to your internship, and the one that you will choose to be your supervisor for your final year project. All right, so that's about our lectures. Um, when hearing about our lecturers, I'm getting excited to know more about them because they seem very sweet as uh, what you mentioned before. Um, so, uh, and when hearing about those subjects, I feel like kind of excited, but at the same time scared. So, uh, I want to know more about the list of course that we're taking in NCOM or uh, we, what we can say is the study plan of NCOM students. So can you explain about the study plan and the list of courses? All right, I can, but let me just uh, put some stresses in the first place. The study plan that you have is a bit different than the study plan that I have. Some of the subjects have changed their name. The lectures are different. Back, back in the time, we have Dr. Rashad, we have Dr. Zurahani, we have some other lectures as well, teaching us a lot of other subjects here and there. So I will do my very best to explain only for NCOM core subjects. We're not going to be talking about UNGS subjects. We're not going to be talking about core curriculum subjects. We're not talking about LM2023 that you will be introduced later on, you know, some other time. We're just going to be talking about a core subject. All right, so your first semester, first year, first semester subjects, you are going to be learning about these three fundamental subjects. Introduction to international communication, introduction to world literature, and introduction to linguistics. Why are these three the ones that you need to learn when it comes to your first year, first semester? One, international communication is your First subject when it comes to communication subjects in NCOM IUM that you will learn more later on. You will have language and not language society, language for intercultural communication. You would need the skill from introduction to in, from introduction to international communication into interpersonal communication. You would need the skill in international relation. You would also see some of the techniques used in inter international communication and public relation even. There's a lot of communication subjects and you have to excel on your first one to get to, look, to get go better. The second one, introduction to world literature. This is more of a creative writing subject, creative reading subjects. 
creating presentation subject. Back in our time, we had to do a theater. And I also remember some of the batches. I think some of the committee members here, their experience of doing work literature is doing short film. But uh, I'm not sure really what is going to happen, what is happening for during the COVID times, but I have heard that they are reading a lot of world literature that is really great. Shakespeare's, we have learned about a lot of other subjects as well. Introduction to linguistics, because you will be learning a lot and a lot of linguistic subjects later in the future. Language society is one of the linguistic aspects. Syntax, phonology, phonetics. Morphology, semantics, you will be learning about translation studies, you will be learning about discourse analysis, applied linguistics. Those are all linguistic subjects that if you don't understand introduction to linguistics, you will have some hard time learning about all of these other linguistic subjects as well. All right. So your second semester, you will be learning about these five core subjects, English for academic writing, persuasive speech, English for the workplace, introduction to entrepreneurship, and language for intercultural communication. As you can see, again, there's communication subjects going on here. All right, so, Almi, you have taken three before and three currently. Which one of these that you are really interested in for now? So far, mm. and for my idea. For uh, the past semester, the last semester, I'm very interested in um, the introduction to world literature because we we learned about um, literature, about um, literature work like from Hamka, from, I'm sorry, uh, the Romeo and Juliet one and we're um, doing, um, we're doing report on the literature work. So I found it very interesting. All right, for, for this semester, for so far, um, two weeks. Two weeks, right? It has been three weeks. Yeah, so far, I think the ENCO 2311 and ENCO 1325, persuasive speech and language for intercultural communication. Good choices. Persuasive speech is actually one of my one of my favorite subjects until now. ENCO 1102 World Speech is also one of my favorite subjects until now. All right, so for your second semester, you'll be learning about English for academic writing. This is very much important. This is your first baby step to get to know what is research paper all about. You'll be learning a lot what is paraphrasing, what is a citation technique, and so on and so forth when it comes to research paper. That will later be continued in another subject that I'm going to be introducing soon. Persuasive speech, as, been, as the name suggests, you're going to be learning about persuasion. You're going to be learning what is a good persuasion, what is a good pitch, what is a good ways to make someone believe in our ideas and pick us to be the one to represent IUM even. I don't uh, I don't know how much are you going to be how you don't know how far can, would you want to go, but you can go as far as you want in the process of speech as well. English for the workplace is going to be teaching you the environment when it comes to in workplace. There's the U language, there's the I, we language, there's a lot of languages, and there's a lot of workplace languages that you're going to be learning in English for the workplace. Introduction to entrepreneurship. As you can see the name entrepreneurship, you are going to be doing some business, whether it be online business, physical business, that is up for your lecture to decide. I will leave the same lecture until now is uh, Sir Mohamed Ton. He is really qualified to be teaching entrepreneurship. And he's really qualified to see if you're doing a good business or not. Next, language for intercultural communication. As you said also just now, one of your interested subjects this semester. And it is a good uh, it is a good subject that I've learned before. We did a program of explorers representing other countries, and we have to introduce in the explorers the games that they learn. That the games the traditional game that they learn in each country. So it's really fun to get to know, you know, some other countries' tradition. Now, moving on to your second level, level two, semester one. Language and society, interpersonal communication, international relations, and morphology. Now, why is it called as being level one? And why is it called as being level two? Because level by level, the difficulty will increase. 
So level two subject starts with number two at the front. There's four numbers, right? So the first one signifies the level, meaning to say the difficulty of the subject has to be increased. So language society, you'll be learning more about the society. You'll be learning more about the effects of using, uh, for example, some of people are using slang here and there. And what are the effects? What are the what are the reason being using such terms? For example, gaming game, gamers, they have certain slang that they use and certain words that they use. You'll be learning quite some of the few in language and society. Language and society. Interpersonal communication, as the name suggests, it is going to be learning about the theories behind interpersonal communication. Back then, we have an activity that we have to sit back-to-back uh, -back with a friend. Guys with guys, girls with girls, not guys with girls, all right? So, and someone's going to be uh, talking behind, and we, the other one, have to get to know what are they trying to say without looking at them. Interpersonal communication is something that's going to be teaching you and training you to become a better listener and a better polite speaker. International relations, more about the international. Some people are going to be triggered when I say this, but it's about international politics. But the political aspect that we're learning here are the theories, are the reasons not the current politics which i do not want to talk about more for uh, more further next one morphology used to be one of my favorite subjects as well but i have long forgotten about morphology because it's been three years since i took morphology so what you're going to be learning here is the sentence uh, not much of the sentence structure but of the word structure you're going to be learning about parts of speeches you're going to be learning about morphemes and a lot more and it's going to be continued with another subject called syntax when you are going to level two, semester two. Phonetics and phonology, and as I said just now, syntax and research methodology. Remember ENCO 1104 when I said about English for academic writing is the baby step to research. Research methodology is considering you as now being a child, no longer a baby. You are now a child in research paper. You'll be learning in research methodology up until chapter three of a research paper and sometimes more. But okay, in research paper, we have five chapters in total, which I do not want to explain further. But you'll be learning the first three up until research methodology, which is number three. Syntax is this, uh, it's not the same as morphology, but we are learning about the structure of the language itself also. Morphology talks about words, syntax talks about sentences. Phonetics and phonology talks about the sounds. Why does native speaker have this kind of sound? Why does Malay speakers have this kind of sound? Why does Chinese people have this kind of sounds? You will be learning you will be learning the face structure, the ones inside uh, until your if not mistaken until your larynx on how the sound being produced. A bit scientific there, but Fun subject, and you'll be learning symbols. You're not going to be learning letters. Next one, level three, semester one. Remember when I said by levels the difficulty will increase. This is what I mean. Semantics is a subject, the last subject for core linguistics, which is on meaning. Semantic subjects is it's really fun, it's really interesting, but there's a lot of going on here and there because it is it is learning about meaning behind semantics, meaning behind words, meaning behind such sentences even. So be very careful with semantics. However, be very attentive as well because it's a really fun subject. The next one, we have public relation. For those who are imagining themselves after graduating, they're going for you know, a corporate world whatsoever. Yes, PR is a subject that you should be focusing on. Applied linguistics, one of the linguistic subjects as well. More on learning, on problem solving when it comes to linguistics. And ENCO 4101, data analysis and interpretation, is when you are now a teenager to research methodology. Or maybe even young adults. But I would just go for teenager when it comes to data analysis and interpretation. Next one, level three, semester two. You will be learning 
and code 3104 communication law and ethics or as we call it as com law not cost law and code 3105 digital media and communication dizimat and code 3326 professional communication prokof or during my time it is called as enco 3106 international business communication the first subject that i took with dr miro in his first semester in iaum pago and the last one is enco 4103 discourse analysis which uh one of the hardest subject i have took in enco iaum i have to be honest here and ENCO 3109 is internship, where you will be doing your practicals. All right, level four, semester one. You'll be learning about Muslim and the new media, corporate communication, a continuation from PR, computer mediated communication, a continuation from Dizimat, and translation studies, the last linguistic core subjects that you'll be learning throughout your NCOM life here in Pago. All right. So I see a comment saying that law is really fun, good for you, but I had a hard time with law because I'm not really good at memorizing uh, facts and all, but it is fun to get to know a lot of communication uh, law. But you will be learning some law as well when you go into Muslim and the new media. Muslim and the new media is also something that is very interesting because You'll be learning about Islamophobia, for example. You'll be learning about the crisis in Uyghur. You'll be learning about what happened in Xinjiang. And you will be actually researching on those. Why does it happen? Corporate communication, for those who are into corporate, you would know what I'm talking about when I say corporate communication. CMC, community communication. It's really interesting. And transition studies, as Yushan Rosman has said before in, one, in the chat box, transition studies best. It is fun. It really is fun last semester before you graduate 4999 final year project only why is it only it carries six credit hours as opposed to all of the other course before three credit hours except for internship five 4999 federal project it's not really something you should be playing around with it took me two semesters to finish final year project all right so uh, tiring but it's worth it all right and this is where you are an adult in research papers you will be learning all you will not be learning all chapters you are doing all chapters of research paper and do not expect on your first consultation for your final project you'll be seeing your lecturer and she's going to be like all right so let's learn about what is introduction to the research paper no you are going to be meeting them on your first consultation and she, the lecturer, she or he, will go, what have you got so far? All right. So be focused in a lot of these subjects. It's really going to be very, very helpful. All right. That is all. And once you're done, congratulations. You have graduated from NCOM IAM Pago. Okay, when I hear about the level one, level two, and until level four, I feel like I'm in a game because like the higher the level, the difficulties will be increased. So I'm kind of scared. <laughs> um, but before I proceed to the next question for you, Fred Bro uh, has, I would like to remind the audience to fill in the registration form as well as the evaluation form. And okay, so we proceed to the next question which is uh based on the study plan we just um uh, look at just now so has which one is the most difficult subject for you to score and which i'm sorry which one is the most difficult subject to score for you uh, in your opinion and which one is your favorite subject and why the most difficult subject for me to score. Let me play some sad background music first. All right. So for me, it has to be ENCO 4103 discourse analysis. All right. The reason being is 
I like discourse analysis. I actually enjoy discourse analysis. But every time you go into the class, you kept taking to yourself. Why is it so many new things every day? Because you'll be talking about this course. This course is actually being critical. So it has come to a point that every time we enter this course analysis class, we would be thinking, what is the first thing that she's going to our lecture is going to say when she comes into the class? That is what we're going to be that is what we have been thinking. Like it's not saying that it is a very, very typical because a lot of my friends score very well in this course analysis, but apparently not for me. Because I felt like there's a lot of things that are very new to me. For example, you'll be learning on why why as well some people for example the signboards that you can see, the stop sign. Why is it red in colour? Why does the picture shows a diamond shape maybe? Why is it in triangle shape maybe? Why does the numbers are coloured this way? Every single thing is a question that you need to answer with why. So as for me who is still training to become more critical when it comes to you know critical thinking, I was think I was thinking like okay I'm gonna be having a hard time with this subject and I do have a hard time with that subject but I enjoyed it so much and even though I don't really score in the subject but I felt like it was worth it being in that class. Now as for my favorite subject I've mentioned before it's almost the same as Almi when she is in her first year and first year first semester and now she's on her first year second semester. The subject that I really like the most is two, uh, two of them actually. And Convo 102, Intro Introduction to World Literature, just because I really love doing theatre and learn about literature and actually love reading literature. But I don't really have much time to read literature now because I'm a bit busy here and there. And and code one zero five being in our time persuasion and speech persuasion and speech communication in your time one three two five if I'm not mistaken just now. Why? Because it's going to be teaching you about two different communication subjects. One is informative, another is persuasion. It might seem similar, but when you're in the class, it's really different. It's totally different. Information, informative is delivering information. Persuasion is making someone believe in your information. For example, when I say blue is the best color, I have to convince you, I have to persuade you to believe that blue is the best color. How? A lot of process going on there. But for me, it is very interesting, especially for us later on that we're going to go into industry perhaps. Persuasion skill is really important. And you will also touch a bit on negotiation as well. So that's very, very fun for me. I do score quite well. I do score well in those two subjects, but I do believe that there's a lot more to learn about those two. All right. When you talk about um, introduction to world literature, and uh, you also mentioned about the theatre part, well, um, it's kind of different for me because um, I am patch COVID, and um, <laughs> compared to the uh, past uh, batch, um, they are doing uh, theatre while for me and my batch we're doing a short film we have to record the short film and edit and all so this can uh, this can be seen as the comparison uh, from your batch which is the pre-COVID-19 and during COVID-19 well the, assess the assessment change and all and I think um, there is a difference for persuasive speech too right yeah. um, we have to do the persuasive speech online we have to in my uh, semester right now i have to find a, a child for me to do my informative speech uh, what about yours in your time for the informative speech during my time for informative speech um well there's first of all there's 14 groups in total so all groups are actually being combined we actually went to four different schools to present something in english we don't really present about english for example in uh, in our group, we're actually presenting about celebrations. We talk about Deepavali, we talk about Chinese New Year, we talk about Hari Raya, all in English. But as for um, when we're talking about your current times, I mean, it's understandable that we can't go to school because we are 
trying to avoid ourselves from being in the risk of COVID-19, right? I mean, health is very important for us. And I'm sure it is very challenging as well for some of us, uh, especially for those who doesn't have younger siblings at home. It's a bit hard to, you know, execute the assessment. Back in our time as well, it wasn't really easy executing the assessment because we actually have to find the school from scratch. Dr. Lily, Dr. Lily's journey is going to guide you through every single step, but you have to do it. If you're not doing it, she's not doing it because the one that is being assessed is us. So I think both during our time, during my time and during your time, both of our time, we have each of difficulty that we have to experience ourselves, right? And ours was not like, not, not saying that it wasn't spontaneous, but we couldn't have the opportunity to meet the students beforehand. Therefore, they do not know at all that what we're going to be teaching. They have zero expectations. And it is up to us to make sure that they enjoy every single thing that they learn and they learn something. Right. So that is interesting assessment. Yeah, very interesting um, to, to start food in the, in the campus to learn. But yeah, things happen and we can't do anything about it. So we have to accept the situation right now. Um, uh, and yeah, I'm I'm the youngest in my family. So when come to this uh, informative speech, and we have to find a child, I think it's kind of hard for me to find a child, to find a kid that understand English. It's not that kids don't understand English, but I have to look for the child um, carefully and um, have to breathe and all can. So it's kind of hard for me, but. Uh, Thanks to you saying that Dr. Lily will help me. I feel a bit relieved to that. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, so the next question would be, the next slot would be expectation and misconception or stereotypes of NCOM students. So I have this, I, I think most of us have this, this experience where people say, Oh, you're taking English, so you you're going to be a teacher, and I'm kind of sick of this. So how do I tell them that I will be an English teacher? Yeah, that's a question. It's like, um, you know, in the comment section, please comment section down there. Who have experienced the same thing? I mean, okay, comment down there. Who have not? experience such stereotypes who has yeah. not experienced such things please please leave down there please leave it in the comment section below because oh my god it's been four years since i've been in ncom iom people have been seeing me doing programs with corporate perhaps they've been seeing me doing programs with the industry yet they are talking about oh so which school are you going to yeah i know right <laughs> Oh, you're going to be a teacher. Oh, what a nice. <laughs> and the fact that none of the subject in NCOM IUM that I have introduced just now have anything saying that teaching English in school. We don't have any single thing. Okay, the max that we have may be persuasion when we're doing informative that we are teaching kids whatsoever. However, that does not define us as being teachers. But again, we cannot really make everyone understand our situation, right? Because they will see the first word, English. What they couldn't see is the next word, com, at the back. I mean, it's not really our fault that they couldn't see it. But it would be our job to actually explain it to them that we're not doing, we're not, we're not teaching. However, you can go for teaching. All right. So we have something. English perceived as being future teachers is inevitable. Yes. Yes, and yes, oh my God, it's been four years, it's been four years that I've been in and come at I still, I still got the same question. Penat nak explain last last, I mean kan je lah. Yeah, However, fun fact, I do agree with I this. Do, fun fact, I do plan to teach. Oh, I'll miss it all of me. <laughs> Step one, right though. <laughs> Irfan Kamal. Step two, show and come IG and this YouTube video. <laughs> Everyone come on, nakal eh? 
All right. So the first thing that you actually have to explain to them is about the name of our course uh, in the first place. It's called as Encom English for International Communication. English for International Communication. We're not English for teaching. So we're not exactly going for teaching, but we can. We can encourage. Yes. Teaching a uh, main objective? No. If you want to see what Encom can actually make you, stay tuned for tonight's session. Lah, kita promote sesi seterusnya. Gitu. Alright, so let's wait because the two speakers tonight, they will explain to you more why Encom is not about being teachers. They are now in the industry of, if I'm not mistaken, one of them before had an internship in. MUFA, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and another one is doing what? I forgot lah. I forgot what Yusran is doing. Did before for internship. I remember Abang Izzat is doing in MUFA, if I'm mistaken. One of my friends now is doing in MUFA as well, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. We have those who are in Vietnam TV. We actually have those who are... What was it again? We have those who are in Petronas. Not doing science, but actually doing English there. We need English everywhere, people. That's why when you're taking NCOM, you can actually go everywhere. Is that Ministry of Tourism, Arts, Culture? All right, I just got that information. about is that Ministry of Tourism, Arts, Culture? Thank you very much. Yes, foreign affairs is used run. Oh, all right. So I mixed up the both of them. But as you can see, school is not within our range. But we can not. I was saying that it's not within our range. But we can go. But we have a lot of places to go. We can go for ministry. We can go for mass media. We can go for corporate world. We can go for teaching is one of them. So many places that we can go. But it's just how sometimes we explain it to people. Like what I've seen in the comments just now. Penat nak explain last last. I mean kan jelah. I mean it's still it's still an occupation, right? So why not? Yeah, so I think I will uh, explain like to people. I'm taking communication, but then people say, "Oh, mass comm." So I will say just, "Ah, oh, yes, yes, yes." <laughs> I don't want to answer for that anymore. I mean, true. Although yeah. we actually have mass comm in I am Gomba and I can chess, but you know we can also we can yeah. also go there. We took Digimed. We have digital media communication. We can actually go for mass mass media. We have PR. We can actually go for mass media. I have a lot of those. Don't worry about it. Oh, talking about stereotypes, expectations, misconceptions. Anyone down there in the comment section, please, if you have not received this comment, please comment something that, oh, I have not received it. Oh, you're studying English. Oh, kau belajar English. Eh? Kau mesti pandai English, kan? <sighs> That's very <what laughs> right. <laughs> I have received this since my foundation year when people ask, oh, what are you taking? I'm taking English. And then, oh, you're very good at English then. I'm just, um, okay, Alhamdulillah. And then out of nowhere, they were going to be asking you to, oh, can you please translate this to this? Yes. <laughs> and That's we very do right. Have translation studies. We do have translation studies. And then all of a sudden, friends ask me to translate things all the time. Kuraito Aini, I I feel you in so many levels. Oh my God, betul. <laughs> okay. However, I do have to stress it out here. You do have to get better level by level. You may feel like I'm not really good in English, though. Why am I here? It is your chance to become a better person. We're not taking English for international communication because I actually am good at it. We are taking it because we're not good at it and we want to improve. All right. So, be mindful that you do have to improve from time to time. Reading, read, reading, writing, speaking, listening, everything. You actually have to improve everything. But it is such a stereotype. It's like what I was saying. It's like if if I'm saying, uh. Oh, you're doing mechanical engineering now. You must be studying mechanical engineering before. Sometimes they don't. My sister is now in accounting, but she studied chemical industry. 
So, you know, stereotypes are just something that people just love to label us with something, you know. So, it's not really, it doesn't really signify who we actually are. Oh, don't get me started on people saying, oh, kau study English, eh? kau mesti diva, kan? Oh, my God, another one. I mean, if you want me to be a diva, sure. But I don't really feel like being a diva, although I might am a bit of a diva here and there. Gito! <laughs> no, I'm not. Right, okay, I have, I have uh, one more question about the stereotypes and um, misconception. But before that, I would like to remind the audience to fill in the reg uh, registration form. And I would also like to promote tonight's session where we have uh, Brother Yusran and Brother Izzat of um, the alumni of IIUM. They are taking NCOM in IIUM. So don't miss uh, tonight's uh, session. and. See you there. Okay, so uh, for the next question would be, okay, this is like another question that stresses me out. <laughs> oh, uh, you're taking English, so you must, uh, you must have have a good grades because it's easy to score, right? <laughs> yes. People saying me getting good grades because I'm taking English. Uh, I get that a lot. So, um. Is it true that the reason language students can score or get good CGPA is because language itself is easy? Yeah, Hakim Abdullah here yes, say that when I ranted to my friends about my assessment and being stressed and all, they will be like, sangat ke kos kau ni? Yeah, what will you say about it? Sis, sabar jap. I need... Ah. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> All right, you know, undeniably, we cannot escape the fact that a lot of our students here actually got great, good grades. We have people who are 3.5, we have those who are 3.9, we have 3.8, we have 3.1, 3.2. We rarely have those who are below 3. All right, take it as a compliment when people say, oh, you must be having good grades. And everything and maybe they are just praying that things are going to be better and easy for us and unfortunately they're not praying 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 that for them I'm not sure why but you know don't don't do this don't learn this from me but i'm just gonna say what i said to one of my friends before when one of my friends from a different kulia said kau senang lah nak dapat four flat ke 3.8 ke aku tak faham kenapa kau tak dapat four flat eh sebenarnya kau senang je kot english je pun and then I was like, and then and then that person continued. Kita orang yang dapat kuliah ni susah kau nak dapat 3.1 pun susah nak dapat 3.0 pun susah. Kau orang senang sangat 3.5. Aku rasa kalau aku masuk kau score apa aku dapat 4 flat. And, and then I was just like macam oh sorry lah kita orang ni rajin nak buat macam mana kan. But do not learn this. Do not say this to people. I'm just going to ex explain what I experienced because I mean me and that person are very close anyway. So I dare to say so. But in some sense it come from irritation that Oh God, work for it. And if you if you have worked for it and you don't get it, you don't get the good grades, it's just not your risky yet. I have faced not getting a dean's list. And I have faced getting a dean's list. I have faced a lot of things as well when it comes to being in this course. So it just doesn't make any sense when people say that, oh, because we're, we're taking languages, it's easy. I, I believe those who are in RCOM and MELCOM and Station as well has been experiencing this. It just doesn't make any sense. I got a B for my Japanese and it's language. How does that make any sense? So no, it doesn't make any sense to just say that, oh, you're studying English, that's why you get good grades. English, Japan, communication, Japan. Oh, sorry lah, kita lagi pandai communication for kau. Ah, faham tak? Faham tak that kind of things that it just doesn't make any sense. However, do take it as a compliment in your heart. When people say that we are good at it, when people say that we can be great teachers, take it as a compliment. Because, I mean, people are praying good things for us. So just say, thank you. But, you know, sometimes we got slipped off and that's what happened. But do not learn that from me. I'm such a bad example. Oh my God, what am I doing here? Uh, do not learn that from me, kid. No, don't do that to your friends. Okay? Thank you. Um... I'm not promising that I will not do that, but I will try to not to do that. 
Um, so uh, this misconception and expectation and stereotypes of NCOM student are also the challenges that we NCOM students um, are going through because like, people um, uh, have this kind of thinking that, oh, it's my, it must be easy to be English, it must be easy to score and all. So uh, talking about the challenges itself, um, you are in your final year now. You, you are in final year. I'm sorry, you are in your final year now. Um, so what is the most challenging thing you have encountered as an income student? What is the most challenging thing when it comes to being an income student in income? I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot going on when I was in when I was doing my major in NCOM because right now I'm just taking Japanese. I'm done with my major subjects. Last semester was FYP. That was the last of my major, but I'm done with it. But what was the hardest is actually. I think one of them is about CGPA. Because, I, I'm not going to deny that when people say say. Oh, English is easy, so I should be getting good scores. And I actually, one of the people who actually believed in it before. So when I did not get my four flat for my first semester, I do, I did feel quite down because people has been saying it's easy. So why couldn't I get it? There was actually, actually meeting expectation is something that's really hard for me. However, uh, after a few semesters after that, then I believe that, you know, it's not because English is easy. It's because, you know. We just have to put extra efforts. If we don't put extra efforts, we're not getting it. No subject is as easy as that. All right. We can be as hard as doing medical medics as well if you if you want it to be. People are getting stressed out here and there doing language as well. So that is one of the challenges. I think you know what's my happiest semester is when I don't get my dean's list. That's well, actually the happiest semester when I don't get it because I finally felt like. I don't have to conform to society anymore, you know? I don't have to be what society told me to be. I no longer am obligated to be in the stereotype. I'm out of it. But I'm not saying here, please do not get dance list. No, I'm not teaching that. Do not please get that dance list if you can. Because it's going to be beneficial for you when you want to grad, when you want to go to work. It's going to be very, 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 very beneficial for you. And I, I got it back last semester. When I was doing my FYP, I got it back. But the things that for me was maintaining CGPA because I'm also on scholarship, so I do have to maintain my CGPA. And the fact that some people are pressuring me here, that I think the expectations, the whatsoever. But CGPA is not everything, you know. As time goes by, I learned that CGPA is not everything. I was in the first year. Thinking that, oh my god, I'm doomed. I'm not getting a four flat. What am I going to do with my life now? And if when you hear tonight's session with Abang Yus and Abang Izzat, you will also listen to them and they will also say something like, why couldn't I get a four flat? But then all of us has realized that num no grades are just numbers. They don't define you. You define yourself. Numbers doesn't define you. I mean, just like we say, age is a number. I'm 25, but I can still like act as a kid. I may look like a father already with all my beard. But you know, that doesn't define me. What defines me is what you do. So, all those challenges, there's a quote that I, that I hold on to. Embrace each challenge in your life as an opportunity for self-transformation. And... Whenever I feel down about all the challenges, I read a lot of challenges, motivational quote online. We have smooth seas do not make skillful sailors. Challenges are what make life interesting. Overcoming them is what makes life beautiful. Difficult, low, difficult roads often lead to beautiful destinations. So, you know, challenges are important in our life. It makes us a better person as a whole. And that is what challenges since my first year until now has made me. I... When I was in my first year, believe it or not, I stutter a lot. And I do not know what word to use when I want to describe something. Ask the lecturers, they know about it. I have a lot of difficulties. But as time goes by, take those challenges level by level. When you're in level four, improve. 
and you'll be a better person. I do agree with uh, what you say. Um, because if there is a will and there is a way for someone to uh, success in their life. So um, when you're talking about uh, all those and, and that, um, I'm thinking about wanting to know tips and tricks in NCOM. So the first question would be any tips to score as an NCOM student or any tips to score uh, as a whole as any student? Tips and tricks when it comes to being an income student. Okay, the first tips or trick is not really for NCOM. I mean, it's not only for NCOM, but only for it's also for every other subject that you're doing. Whoever that's listening this, uh, listening to this, uh, from I don't know Malcom, Arcom, or even engineering, or maybe or maybe for my call, wherever you are, the tips and tricks. The first one I would say, get to know your lectures why they are the one going to be teaching you get to know them two get to know your seniors they have experienced what you are about to experience maybe some changes here and there especially our experiences are very different right pre-covid before covid at pre-covid during covid is very different but at least you get some insights and i see one comment in youtube uh, please participate in unique activities to get good soft skill. This is not just for NCOM again. This is for every kind of students. Please uh, improve on your soft skill. You're not going anywhere if you don't have those soft skills. You're not going anywhere if you don't know how to communicate. Because by the end of the day, the first thing that your employers are about to see is first your resume. Second is going to be you talking about yourself. If you don't know how to do that, you don't know what word to use, what word to choose, you don't know how to say it, how to deliver it, you're not getting the job. That is first thing. And that is a lot of the a lot of the tips and tricks. Another one, as much as some subjects are very hard, for example, for me, I don't actually like international relations, no public relations. You know what I did bold me. I actually went to the lecturer and said, Sir, uh, back then it was uh, a male lecturer, it was Dr. Rashad teaching. And I said to him, Sir, I hate international relations. I said it in front of him, I hate international relations. And I don't get why people like it. I don't get why my batch like it so much. And then he said, Thank you for telling me the truth. I am doing the job of, of teaching, but now I know that I may have mis mislooked at everyone, someone that doesn't like it, and I've been teaching blindly. So what he said is he's not going to convince me to love IR, international relations, but he's going to convince me that this knowledge are going to be useful. So that's when I say, get to know. But of course, I said it in a very polite manner. I don't go around, sir, I hate you. No, I don't do that. I don't do that. I just go around. So I'm having a really hard time because I don't enjoy international relations. That is the least of my favorite subject. So, yeah. But I, I don't encourage you to suddenly go around, hey, I don't like this subject. But, you know, you can actually go slow talk with your lecture. Tell them about your problems. Tell them about your struggles in those particular subjects they are more than delighted our lectures are very lovely they would really love to know if you have any problem regarding the subject your personal problem you can put it aside you can talk about it with someone else but if you have problem in that class please just tell your lecture that is my trick i told my lecturers that i'm having troubles even during this course i told it wasn't this course, it was social linguistics and morphology. I talked I talked with my lecturer, which is back then it was uh, Madam Faradiba. I talked to her. Persuasion, I talked to Madam, uh, Madam Lily. IR and PR, I talked to Dr. Rashad. Do that. Because then they know that their students are having a problem. Then they know what to do, what to tackle. All right? It might be scary. To talk to them because i mean you know lecture student so do not go blindly at 12 a.m 
12 midnight. Sir, I'm having trouble doing your work. You don't do that. When in class, if you have any problem, say. Talk it up. Sir, I don't actually understand whatever I'm learning right now. So, I'm not sure if my tips and tricks are actually useful, but... They are. They are useful. Right. Um, okay, so moving on to the next uh, slide, which is uh, the benefits of banking and com. So is taking and com beneficial? Because some students might question, oh, um, should I take and com? Should I take English? And some student um, does not like the communication part, but they do like language. So um, please uh, give a uh, is please give uh, the benefit the benefits of taking uh and com as a major. Yeah, for the audience to know. All right. Let me just say this first. It's not going to be beneficial to you if you come to NCOM and all you do is complain. It's not going to work out that way. If you come to NCOM and just say, oh my God, it's so hard. Oh my God, I don't like this. Oh my God, why am I here? It's not going to be beneficial for you because your mindset is important. All right. So when you are taking NCOM, MELCOM, RCOM even, and when you're taking PHM even, put in your mind that you want to learn something. And anything that you put your heart into learning something is going to benefit you one way or another. For example, myself, when I was young, not too young lah, when I was 20, it's five years ago, but I always dreamed to become someone that talks a lot, becoming a motivational speaker, influencer, whatsoever that you want to call it, you know. That is something that I actually enjoy. Hence, maybe that's why I'm going for teaching. But I have a trouble talking. I have a trouble talking. So, being an NCOM helped me to improve my self-confidence. I don't know what to what else to say about the benefits of NCOM because I just don't see any flaws. <laughs> so I think everything is beneficial. You can improve your writing skill, you can improve your speaking skill, you can improve so many things. And most importantly, this is something I talked with one of our lecturers also. Again, one of the tips and tricks is talk to lecturers, right? So what I talked with, I think it was Madam Lily, I think it was Dr. Lily Suryani. She said, I'm not here teaching you to become a good NCOM student. I'm teaching you to become a human being. And true to her words, I felt alive in NCOM. And to me, that's very important because who wants to go and feel like a robot? I don't think any of us would enjoy that. So when she said, I'm going to make you a human being, I felt that. And I actually feel like I'm alive, you know? I don't feel that inside. I might be, I might be dying lah because of the assessments and all the works. I might be dying lah, but you know, at least I'm dying, not broken. Get me? So the benefits would be to your heart. You decide if it's beneficial or not. To me, it's very beneficial. As you can see now. I'm actually chasing it, chasing my dream. Yeah, I do agree. Whatever you taking or NCOM or Malcom, whatever it is, uh, I believe that every knowledge in this world is beneficial for you. Or uh, maybe not now, but in the future, there will surely be beneficial for you. Uh, as for example, I would like to take for myself. Um, I used to not to be confident to talk of, uh, in front of people but when i'm taking english as uh, for the communication uh, international international communication i'm sorry um i learn i'm learning about the communication part and now i feel a little bit confidence to talk in front of people and i think that's why i'm here today uh, to discover myself to to see to open a uh, new door for myself and for my future so that's all a question for um, 
for you, Red Hearts. And we're going to move on to the Q&A session. Yeah, can we do that? Yes, I'm okay with that. So, um, I would like to if, get to know our audience more as well. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Um, so, <laughs> this speaker will be a very good one, right there. <laughs> yeah, as well, then, brother. <laughs> Um, so for the audience, if you have any questions, please um, comment in the chat box. You can ask anything when it comes to NCOM. I will try my very best to answer. Um, however, do not ask me personal questions. That my personal is my private <laughs> life. <laughs> anything about NCOM, you can ask Brother Has here. Or if you want to ask Sister Alm also. Oh. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel so far in in Ancom Army? Um, well, at first, uh, in my foundation year, I feel kind of scared because I don't think I can be in this. I'm not sesuai as sesuai that berada dalam kosmi. But then, um, I get uh, a lot of good friends. They are supportive and support me very well so i feel and my parents do they support me being in here being in ncom so i feel relieved to know that to have people around me supporting me in this course and then when i enter degree i get um good seniors and all sis aini sis moon uh, and you yourself brother has you <laughs> you guys help me a lot so yeah, thank you so much to these people that have been supporting me. You're welcome. Any questions? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, we have one. Have you ever feel like giving up in NCOB or in studying? In, in life or in general or in NCOB? <laughs> Can be anything in life, in general or in, in NCOB itself? Not, not gonna lie, I did. I did felt like giving up. I did felt like, can I just quit my degree and just be jobless or something, or just work at seven e? I don't know, or maybe be part of diabetes or something. I don't know. I just felt tired learning, not, not, not feeling it. There was there were semesters that I felt like, am I actually, am I actually learning anything? Do I actually want to be here? You know. That kind of things and let's just not be let's just be realistic here pago we don't really have a lot of things if we want to enjoy ourselves we don't have a lot of things around us we just have ourselves which makes it interesting actually but i did i didn't feel like giving up but then i told myself has kau dah lah tukar course daripada engineering masuk income pasal kau nak give up apa benda and then i told i told myself how much uh, was it going to be worth it if you give up now for your future and then i kept thinking about my mom one of my motivations to finish my degree is actually my mom one of my biggest goal is actually to be in a physical convocation and have my mom sit down there see me taking my graduation scroll that is my motivation to actually continue doing and the fact that she also said, "Kalau boleh, Umi nak lah seorang anak Umi jadi cikgu," and I was like, "That is something that I want to do." So I felt more motivated. All right. Okay, for the next question. Oh, <laughs> sorry. For the next question from Tengku Anissa Najra, what kind of internships do you do? Yeah, I kind of a uh, question about that too. I wonder about that. Fortunately, I could not really answer that. I have not taken my internships yet because I'm doing internship next semester, this short semester coming this July. However, places that I'm thinking of again because I'm planning to become a, a teacher, right? So places I'm thinking of is school. Um, I have thought of actually going for Astro and Bernama and PBL Hijra. I did not consider Petronas because I don't like that kind of area. Uh, and I have thought
sort of some productions as well. Uh, because I also enjoy uh, entertainment field. But uh, my main area would be schools because I do feel like I want to be a teacher. Teacher or lecturer, whichever that comes first or whichever that is more suitable for me. That is what something I want to do. But again, remember, NCOM is not somewhere that is going to be teaching you to become a teacher. It's teaching you to use English for professionally. So you can use it anywhere. All right. Okay, for the next question from Ain Shahida, have you ever feel awkward or out of place among your friends due to your flying colors? Okay, first of all, I have felt that due to my flying colors, I have also felt awkward with friends that are, you know, they are having the flying colors and I don't. But then again, by the end of the day, I was thinking to my, I, I talked to myself, I told myself, you are the one that's learning, you are the one that's getting the knowledge, not them. I mean, they are also getting their knowledge, I'm getting my knowledge, so I constantly tell myself, do not compare your grades with them, but I did, especially when it comes to international relations, all my friends somehow, somewhat can answer every single question in the class, and I just couldn't. I felt that, and I pray that people don't feel that with me, but I did, so I answer the question, I did. All right. What? From Farah Tasha, what do you want to do after graduate? I'm planning, again. Part of me is fulfilling my mom's dream, part of me is fulfilling what I dreamt of. So it's actually in the education field. I'm considering as well to take diploma in education later on. So that is something that I plan for, but that is mine. And I'm also planning to, you know, open up a YouTube channel, perhaps to do more of these kind of things, because I do enjoy speaking. I do enjoy and I do feel like I want to speak more to help people to feel that they're not alone in this journey, especially. Some of us tend to feel very alone in the journey, especially relating to the past question. I felt awkward because I'm the only one that is not good in international relations. But I want I want I want to motivate people to feel like they're not alone. You're not alone. But you can do it. Talking about the YouTube channel, um, I found it very interesting because like, yeah, we and consider we love to talk. <laughs> so yeah, all from Dr. Lily Suryani, teaching does not take place in school. Only. You can be a trainer in organizations. Yeah, but, and I do agree that many will benefit from you. But it has. Um, oh, I would like to get to know more when it comes to that statement just now. I, I will explore more when it comes to teaching later or, or training for teaching. Okay, from Ain Shahida, we're moving on to the next question from Ain Shahida. Honestly, do you honestly do you think Pago or Gamba is a better location for NCOM students? Pago. Pago, why? <laughs> why is that? Because we don't have anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I mean, okay. Sure, when it comes to having facilities, when it comes to having a lot of stress-free, stress-reliever areas, yes, Gomba. But I do felt like Pago is the, the place. Pago is the place simply because I don't really like noises for me. And when I was studying in Gomba before as an engineering student, 10 a.m., 10 p.m. is... There's cars everywhere, and I'm just, oh my god, where am I going to actually live like a normal person? So when I got here, and let's just be honest here, our room in Pago is spacious. The rooms in Gomba are small, and the toilets are outside. Rooms in Pago, the toilets are inside. I actually love it. <laughs> but, you know, if you're looking for a stress reliever, that, that's a bit hard. But, you know. You can actually do a lot of things to enjoy together. You can actually call for delivery, eat together with your friends in the rooms maybe, or even, you know, in the cafe. You can actually, but, you know, 
COVID times, you do have to take care of the SOP. Don't just simply, oh, okay, we're just gonna do it, you know, take care of the SOP. But honestly, for me, Pago is the place. Yeah, I have been uh, in a Pago before in semester one. And at first, I was like, oh, why Pago? Pago has nothing. But then when I see that, I feel like, oh, Pago is not that bad. It's kind of nice. And I feel grateful to be in Pago. So from Noraini Ismail, brother has, uh, brother has boleh jadi the next patria year of TV3. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. If it's good for me and for the religion, pray for that. Inshallah. For the religion as well. We don't do things uh, simply for nothing. Thank you. Okay, next question from Siti Kuratu Aini. If you could turn back time, would you go for NCOM again or do you want to try other things? Is, is this a trick question? <laughs> <laughs> I would I would want to learn NCOM again. I also want to learn something else as well. Uh, before I actually changed from engineering to NCOM, I actually considered psychology. I considered banner. I considered econs. So I actually considered a lot of a lot of things. Everything except for engineering and sciences. I actually enjoy. It. I was actually considering IRK. However, uh, the requirement is that you have to have basic. You have to have basic Arabic. And I don't, because I come from a uh, school Harian that you know daily schools that does not teach Arabic. There, they might be daily schools young teach Arabic, but I don't. So, yeah, and that is for me. I do want to learn NCOM all over again, but I do feel like I want to try something else as well. There's a lot of things to explore in this world. Okay. Um, the next question from Nofara Ali Zubair. Is Ani stuck? <laughs> All right, so, Nofara Ali Zubair. What are things at, that make you feel so grateful in becoming an NCOM student? Almi, are you stuck just now? Are you okay now? No. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Almi, are you okay now? Oh, I'm sorry for the inconveniences. <laughs> I'm sorry for the technical problem. So, uh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, uh, I'm going to read the question again from no uh, Nefara Ali Zubay. What are things that make you feel so grateful in becoming an NCOM student? What are the things that make me grateful are the lecturers, the friends, and the fact that when I realized now, because I kept thinking, okay, we're in IOUM, but we're learning English and we don't actually learn, you know, a lot of Quranic verses maybe. We don't learn a lot of Hadith verses maybe. But then thinking back, all the past four years, it has been embedded in each of those subjects, actually. It was... Thinking back, okay, for example, when you're doing persuasion, if you're in Madame Lily's class, she will tell you, be polite when you want to persuade someone. And it is in the Islamic studies that if you want people to follow you, have good manners, have good ethics. If you want people, because our best example, our beloved Prophet Rasulullah he has the best of manners and he managed to convince and persuade a lot of people. That alone shows that persuasion needs politeness, and that is actually being taught in NCOM. And even in PR, we are being taught to actually solve problems, not run away from it. Crisis, learn about the crisis, face it, not run away from it. And that is actually also being taught in Islam. So when I was thinking back, oh my god, there actually, there's actually so many Islamic studies in NCOM, I felt like alive not just as a human being but alive as a muslim as well so when i realized that i felt like this is it this is the place that i actually want to be and i felt so grateful that i did not regret now that i changed my course 
I felt like no regrets. This is the place. All right, that's me. Okay, from <laughs> from Shahira Zuno, not a question, but thank you, Haz, for being a good and kind senators. Jom makan sushi. Can I follow? Makan sushi? Go for isolation first 10 days here in, in Pago, and then we go for sushi when we can get out, all right? Okay. Um, do we have any question more? To be honest, I was so excited. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is the question. Um, Muhammad Ifrain, due to COVID, we are limited by doing assignments indoor rather than doing it outside. Do you think the outcome of NCOM students can't do outside assignment will affect them? It's a bit hard for me to answer that because when I was already, when, when Corona came, I was already done with all the, you know, kerja lapangan. I have done with all of the being outside doing work. It's mainly being in, on the inside already. So I couldn't really, you know, explain much about it. But in my honest opinion, it will affect them. However, you decide if it's going to affect you positively, giving you a good impact, or giving you negative impact. You decide. Because by the end of the day, you are the one learning the subject. I'm the, I've done it. But you might think that it's going to be very bad for you because you can't do outside programs and seeing a senior has been doing like, oh my, it's so fun. But then again, you have the technology. You are advanced in doing IT. The community members here are actually having the best skill of handling StreamYard, handling YouTube Live. I don't have that knowledge because we were not exposed to it. You have the exposure to technology better than any of us does. And some, maybe, we don't know, maybe some of our lecturers as well are not being exposed to all of this as well. But you are more advanced. So that is to me a good impact but of course the the thing the, the thing is the struggle of being just in the house or just indoor is also going to affect you mentally so please have a support system that's going to help you throughout your entire entire income life any more questions yeah i do agree that um uh, it depends on you because uh, you decide your own um, journey, right? So from Najla Ari, when you feel that engineering, engineer is, engineering is not for you, do you ever feel hesitant to change the course since engineering is like the course? Um, I know what you mean, Najla Ari. No, actually no. I was never hesitant to change my course. I just had think I just had thoughts of which course do I want to go apart from engineering. Because it may be the course for Malaysia. It is not the course for me. So in deciding the route or the route, I'm I'm terribly sorry, I don't really know how to pronounce the word R O U T E. Is it route or route? However, in deciding it, you will be the one choosing the course for you, not anyone else. Your parents can suggest, your friends can tell you what to do. Again, my hashtag, you decide. But be responsible for your decision, right? Tring, ding, ding. Alhamdulillah, masih review pula, support pula has. Assalamualaikum, Ilyas Badrul. He's my roommate, by the way. <laughs> Cannot roommate. We're in the same room right now. <laughs> you have okay. Here, yeah. uh, another question from No Shahira Zaino Hisha. It's great to watch this live with my Bobati. As a Malcolm student, I have a question: How to improve our speaking and writing skill in English? Uh, as most of subjects are taught in Malay, for Malcolm students, they are being taught in Malay. So how? The best way 
to improve your speaking and writing skills in English, even though you're in Malcolm, is to speak in English and write in English. You're doing great typing this, doing great writing this, you're doing great delivering this. So keep practicing because to this is an advice I got from my EPT lecture in foundation. To master a language, you have to speak the language. However, know your limits. Know your limits. If you're not good at, for example, a persuasion speech yet, do not just suddenly go and, oh, I'm doing persuasion right now, yeah, 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 yeah. but you're not good at it yet. Learn. Something that you're not good at it yet, learn. But when it comes to improving, the key is consistency. Keep doing it. Keep writing and speaking in English. It will help. It might sound cliche or it might sound like, um, a, duh, of course everyone know how to, you know, keep on doing it. But there's no other tricks to it. Do it. That's how we got better from our first year. That's how I got better from my first year, not knowing what to say. And now I know what to say in my final year. So yeah, keep practicing. Yeah, I would like to remind uh, again to the audience, don't forget to fill in the registration form and the evaluation form. We have any other questions? Okay, yeah. From Ainin Sofia, are there are there any chances to learn internationally? Again, I cannot answer fully for this question because um you see I'm not sure if exchange programs offered during COVID times, but I do see some messages of offering being an exchange program and yes you do have the chances chances to learn internationally however it is limited due to COVID-19 I'm not sure how much far can you go so if you are if you are interested in having a exchange program you can always you know ask the staff or you can even reach out to KLMSS international affairs or academic affairs they can help you to get some information for you or even from you know the uh, income office maybe malcolm office detention office uh Arcom office just ask them they can try to find answers for you i'm sorry i couldn't answer yes. this um is it uh, i'm sorry for the the question the um uh, to learn internationally just now um i'm in the second semester first year right now um just few days ago i saw uh an a, a trade message where um we are offered to start uh to to apply for exchange student to japan yeah oh, so yeah okay uh next question in your opinion what makes a good and calm student I want to know the answer to this too. In my opinion, what makes a good income student is your manner. If you don't have good manners, you're not a good income student. You might be an income student, but you're not a good income student if you don't have manners. Manners, politeness, good attitudes, there are always something that you need to have everywhere you go not just as an income student but in life in general however the question is about good income student right okay so let's just try to combine that hard work in doing your work do not be a free rider if you'll be a free rider do not blame your friends if they are biting you from far and during COVID times do not blame them if they come to you and cough in front of you I will not blame them as well if you are being a free rider I would encourage you to do so you know, considering the fact that they don't have COVID-19, we don't want it to spread, right? Um, don't be a free rider. Do your work. Consult lecturers. Be polite with lecturers. Ask appropriate questions. Be critical. Everything that you learn in NCOM classes, what makes you a good NCOM student. And it has to be in line with being polite, being mannerful, 
because menace make a fan. Yes, menace make a uh, man. Okay, uh, here about the exchange program. You can contact Brady Ifan here or see Shahira and they can help you with exchange program. For any um, information about them, you can go to um, IG KLMSS Society. Yes. From Nazali. Such a good advice for us. Yes. Okay, from Umaira Isa. Have you ever faced difficulties to manage your time equally between assignments and universities when activities like KLMSS or theater club? Yes, <laughs> of course I have. Of course I have. I have had some time. <clears throat> um, when you are involved with KLMSS or theater club or a lot of other clubs out there, name it. The first thing that you need to do is to tell yourself is it worth it to be involved in all at the same time if it's not worth it which one do you have to throw away to make sure that you are living a better life and when you have decided for example i took theater club and calamuses and being an income student full-timer so what i did to make sure that i'm not being a free rider i did <coughs> Do this. I did say to my group mate, are you sure you are okay having me knowing that I have calamuses and theater activities that may that may have me be in the urgency of helping these other two things? And if you're okay with it, then uh you're okay with it. What should I compromise to make sure that I don't become a free rider for this group? So one of my group men actually said, don't worry, we'll cover most of this, but we need you to be in track for this part. And during presentation, I we would need you to be doing a lot of the presentation area. So segregate your works properly because not a lot of people would understand why do we want to go for calamuses? Why do we want to go for activism club? Why can't we just be in the room? I can't be in the room all the time. But I did say beforehand that this and this and this. But I did say to them, do not worry. I will do my job. I do come here to learn. I do can I do come here to be an NCOM student full timer, not to become Kalamasa full timer or theater club full timer. Therefore, I will do my job. And promise that not to them, promise that to yourself so that you will eventually separate your time. When will you do calamus activities and when can you do other club activities such as the other club and when is the time for you to actually do your work. And believe me, when you have done that, things are going to go smooth. It did for me and I think, I hope and i believe it will work for everyone else keep your priorities straight all right yeah yes <clears throat> i agree and when talking about uh, manage your time equally between assignment and university activities i'm getting remi uh, reminded by the uh, tonight session which will we be having brother yusran and brother Isaid for tonight's session we'll be talking about balancing the academics and co curriculum so um, if you want to listen to the talk, please be there um, at uh, the KLM, uh, KLM SS Society YouTube channel and um, at 8.30 p.m. Yes. Don't miss the opportunities. And Yusran and Abang Izzat, uh, they are very good at balancing their time. I have known Abang Izzat since foundation. I have known Yusran since my first year, still when I was in engineering. They are very good at balancing their time. They are, you know, people will call them as being the epitome of NCOM students. They are what NCOM is all about there. They are the ones that, you know, the kind of people 
girls want to be with them, guys want to be them kind of thing, you know? Because they're just that great. But, again, they are the epitome of NCOM, and they are the epitome of themselves. And a lot of times, most of, most of us during our batch, we did feel insecure with them. We did feel, you know, going back to the question before, uh, felt awkward being in my batch. However, as time goes by, what I have learned is each and every one of us are an epitome. We are the epitome of ourselves. We are who we are. We're the best to being in the religion area as well. Lah. Do not forget about the religion side. All right. We don't just go saying that, oh, I am who I am. So let's say I'm a murderer. So I'm just being who I am. You cannot do that. You know, abide by the law of religion. Abide by the Sharia law. Do not forget about Sharia law whatsoever. However, be in your very best way to make sure that you are able to one day say to people, like I am saying now, I am an epitome of myself. So, and I'm sure to that session, Abang Yus and Abang Izzat, your Abang Yus and your Abang Izzat, not, Abang Izzat is my Abang Izzat as well, but I don't call you as Abang Yus, you know. But they will say the same thing. They will also say, you are the best version of yourself. And no one else can be you. Okay. Um, yeah, I get to see the sneak peek of tonight's session, and I'm getting very excited to be there tonight to see the to watch the live. So um, we're done with the Q and A session, but before we end the session, I have one last question. What's your advice to students out there who are interested in income but still have doubts about it? They're not sure, uh, should I take NCOM and all that. So what is your advice? Isikara. That's how I changed my course. I did Isikara. You know, the funny part, when I was changing my course, I was thinking, I was telling people, I'm changing to Econs. Econs, yeah, not NCOM. I was changing to Econs. And that particular night, I did my Isikara saying that, Oh Allah, I am so done with engineering. And I don't think this is the place for me. But you know better. If I am not destined to no, I am no longer destined to be in engineering. No longer destined to be in engineering. Make me change my course. Here's the funny part. Next morning, I woke up for Subo. And I fell back to sleep. And I've been doing that for a lot of times. Alright? Don't do that. After Subo, you're going to go back. It's not nice. When I woke up again, I took a bath. And when I was taking a bath, there's nothing in my head. There's nothing in my head. It was the first time that I have nothing in my head. I love to make dramas in the toilet. That's just me. But I have nothing in my head at time. I have no way. I have no idea why. Next thing I know, I put on clothes. I put on my shoes. I went to open. A, I went to a center. The center in Gombak back then. I put it up. And then I open it up. I click change of program. I click NCOM. I went to Bank Mamalat to do my payment. I went to Ahmad and send the receipt. When I got out from Ahmad and I was thinking, what was I doing? What have been I been doing? Why am I here? And then I got in my hand a receipt of change of program. And I was telling myself, is this an answer to last night's prayer? But I was telling people I'm changing to Econs, why is NCOM here? And then I remembered in that is Ikara, I told myself, I, I told, I, I was praying to God, I love English. So when I said that, I'm not sure why NCOM do. I mean, it could be banal, it could be castle, but why NCOM do? Now, at this time, I understand why it's NCOM. So, do it, Sikora, if you have doubts. And ask for one or two people max opinion, opinion on changing course. Do not ask the whole world. You will be having a hard time deciding because everyone will tell you differently. One or two people, your mom, 
your best friend. Go ahead. That is all. And make sure you decide. Be responsible with your decision. No one else should take the blame for what you did. That is all. Thank you so much for the advice. It is such a good advice for the students out there who are still con contemplating to the uh, end commoner. So we are at the end of. Oh, okay. Sorry, don't let go. Like hari ni, thank you guys. Thank you so much for being here to all the audience. Um, and thank you so much. Uh, yes. Ira puji melambung ni ada niat tersembunyi ke Ira? Tiba. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think that's all for today's session. Uh, wait a minute. Okay. So that's all for today's session. And yes, don't forget to fill in the registration and uh, registration form and evaluation form. And I would like to uh, say again that. Um, um please if you have time please be there for tonight's session it will be an interesting um session for tonight okay this is the poster yeah yeah <laughs> okay get to know us talk with alumni bro perform balancing academics and co-curriculum i'm sorry Nizla. Uh, i'm sorry N Najla Arif's comment is blocking the <laughs> yeah. okay Okay, this is uh, uh, Radio Yusran and Radio Izai. Um, there will be the speakers for tonight and we have Sister Ayn for the moderator for tonight. So please be there to, to watch tonight's session. And that's all for today's, uh, to, uh, I'm sorry. That's all for this morning session. Get to know us, talk with senior uh, from NCOM series. So. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and thank you so much to uh, Brother Hasbua and all the audience. You're welcome. All right. Oh, uh, if anyone have any questions regarding to Encom, do not forget to ask those questions in Instagram, Encom IAUM. Ask away, your committee members will be the one that's going to help out a lot for you. Yes, this is a sneak peek for tonight's uh, session. Like Bro Izzat said this in an, uh, the other day, don't be me, jangan rendahkan diri sendiri, be yourself the best version of yourself. When reading this comment, for I must have oh, very excited for tonight's session. So if you're excited too, please be there to watch tonight's session. So that's all from us. I'm sorry, uh, we are very sorry for any inconveniences and thank you for so much for being here. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hi guys. Oh my god, Hi. Rindunya Abang Izzat dengan Yus. I can't wait to see them tonight.